The folklore in Kid Cryptid wouldn't exist if it weren't for the rich history and vibrant cultures these stories come from. While we do our best to provide accurate information, we recognize that we are, at best, amateurs here. This podcast is best considered for entertainment purposes only, and it comes from a place of love and respect for the peoples behind the lore. Now, on with the show. I'm Elias. And I'm Sean. And you're listening to Kid Cryptid, the podcast where my dad says a bunch of confusing words really fast to talk about mysterious creatures known as cryptids. What are you doing? I'm introducing the show. Yeah, but you're stealing my line. That's my bit. Should we start over? Would that make you happy? No. The moment's already passed and the magic's lost anyway. Let's just keep going. Well, how about you tell me what this week's cryptid is? Will that make it better? Maybe a little. Let's see how you react to what this cryptid is. Are you ready? Yes. Today, we're going to talk about melon heads. Melon heads? Yeah. Okay, that's not scary. Uh, If I saw a melon head, then I'd be like, melon! (laughs) Well, maybe. I mean, and I'm being absolutely serious. Melon heads are a real thing. Well, more like a claim to be a real thing, but still. So what are you picturing right now? I'm picturing it being Odd Squad right now, and they're solving the mystery of... This person that has a melon head. I think we can agree it's a pretty silly name, but it's also hard to argue that it doesn't get right to the point. Melon heads get their name, as you guessed, due to their rather large heads. They're also said to be hairless, with red eyes, sharp teeth, and deformed limbs. And that's not what I pictured. No, not at all? Not at all. I mean, like this man with a melon head. Yeah, for sounding like an off-brand candy, they don't sound very nice, do they? Not at all. Where do you think they live? America. Yeah, that's fair. It was kind of a trick question anyway. Uh, Stories of melon heads seem to come primarily from three places. Connecticut, Ohio, and Michigan. I find this kind of interesting because I can see where Ohio and Michigan could have some overlap. But Connecticut doesn't bother any of those states. Despite this, however, their origin story is more or less the same in each place and from around the same time period. Um, you know what? We should move. Why? Because you said Ohio. We live near Ohio. We do, but we also don't live near Michigan, so... Well, yeah, but if a metal head decided to come to Kentucky, then... Boof. Yeah, well... Just uh, hear me out here. You might be rethinking a little bit about the melon heads and how believable they are. Well, now I'm thinking, is it? Well, now I'm thinking that it's like Gary Mo- Gary's Mod because, like, I've seen a lot of episodes from Gary's Mod, and um, there's this new SCP SCP called One Zero Six or me. Or I, or maybe something else, but I don't know. Like it's this person that is white and has sharp hands, but not like sharp teeth. Okay, SCP is a totally different thing, and also another podcast that our friend Rory Parsons works on. So Wait, we're not going to go quite that direction. No, 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 no. It's like this. Well, no. What I mean is, it's like it's this big place with a lot of deadly people in it. Okay. Well, we're talking about melon heads, so let's get back onto that. Okay. So in the 1960s, there was an old mansion in the woods owned by a very wealthy man. This mansion was used as a hospital of sorts for children suffering from a condition known as hydrocephalus. Any what? idea what that is? I don't know. I kind of figured as much. So here's a quick breakdown of some medical terminology for you. No. Okay. Hydro means water. Cephalus means head. So literally, it means water head or water on the brain. So when a person has hydrocephalus, their brain gets filled up with way more fluid than is supposed to. And this causes the brain to swell and creates a lot of pressure in the head. When this happens in babies, it can easily lead to large misshapen heads since their skulls aren't fused together yet. And it allows for that kind of weird growth. Does the melon head name start to make sense now? 
Yes, but question, how did the water get in its head? Um, it's not necessarily water. It's um, kind of spinocerebral fluid, which is, yeah, it, it's stuff that your nervous system needs to help operate. Um, but that's going to get way more anatomically complicated. So we're going to stop there. Okay. Now, now that you know, too, that this is a, an illness, do you think this is a very nice name? I think it's a mean name. Yeah, to, to call somebody a, a melon head yeah. because they've got a, a disease? Yeah, that's like that's a bad joke, something like that. Kind of, yeah. It's not very nice. Yeah. Coming back to the story, this mansion was home to a bunch of kids suffering from hydrocephalus. It's here that the stories begin to diverge a bit. In one version, the mansion's owner was a kind man who was genuinely interested in taking care of the children and protecting them from a prejudiced world. Sadly, though, the man passed away, leaving the children all alone to fend for themselves. Having lived isolated lives for so long, they were untrusting of strangers and were violent out of fear more than anything. Where do you think these stories are going to go? That they're going to go to, that they're going to turn into monsters and they're going to go out in the wild and start killing people. You're uh, surprisingly close, actually. What? Um, another version says that the mansion's owner was a cruel man named Dr. Crow who used the children for experiments. He injected their heads with more liquid and mutilated them in other ways, arguing that it was for science. At some point, the children either escaped or murdered the doctor and burned the mansion down. Having been abused all their lives, the children grew up violent and angry and were believed to have turned to cannibalism, eating anyone careless enough to wander into their territory in the woods. So you you were kind of right that they were... Yeah, I out in the wild. I was very close to like cannibalism because I said they were going to like they're probably going to like kill people and but what they are doing is they're killing people and eating them. Cannibalism's kind of scary in its own right. I mean, eating people eating people is kind of one of those things that's that's a taboo for pretty much everyone. So that oh. that right there is meant to make it scary. Well, it's also violent. It is also violent. Now, a third version is pretty similar to the last one, except that it was an insane asylum instead of a mansion. And it was the patients who were experimented on, not children. Still, the place burned down and they fled into the woods to become people-eating monsters. Well, question, why would they go into the woods? Well, that's because that's where the mansion was. And so if they burn the mansion down, now they're just in the woods. I thought, like, the mansion was in front of a road or something. No, I mean, I, I'm sure there had to have been some kind of road, though. I mean, how else do you get to the mansion, right? Probably like a rocky road. Yeah, I think you found a plot hole. Now, which version of the story you get depends on where you are. Dr. Crow, for example, is pretty Ohio-specific, where Felt Mansion is a Michigan detail. So pieces may change here and there, but the core of the story is more or less the same. Now, though, I want to get your thoughts on a couple of things. Based on everything we've talked about in previous episodes and now in this one, do you think melon heads really count as cryptids? Um, I think they, I think they actually count as, like, diseases because, like you said in the story, that there was a disease that made them um, monsters. Yeah, but were they even really monsters? No, they were, like, kids. They didn't, they didn't want to do that. Because, like, they had a disease. Well, I get I get it. They were pro- Actually, if they were a monster, they were probably just trying to survive. And Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I mean, because if somebody, depending on the story, if they, they were being taken care of and their caretaker died, they had to fend for themselves the only way they knew how. Yeah, but wait, what if there was, like, no animals down there? Well, that's why they would catch people. Again, these are just stories, and they're not very nice stories, and I agree with you there. Um, now, how true do you think these stories are? I think, like, these stories are kind of... You know how they are, like, cryptids? Like, they are not real, and they are real at the same time. I don't know, but I don't know anything about these stories, so I don't know... If anybody's seen them. Oh, people have claimed to see them. Well, probably. 
But if they told the story, then they would probably be a lie from them. Well, I guess this does make sense, though, because if they eat people and they catch them and eat them, it's not. It doesn't say a lot of good about their hunting skills if there are a lot of survivors. Yeah, that, like there was probably like. Well, remember how like Santa gives children a lot of toys at, and there's like a lot of children and people mm-hmm. on the world. Th- then that has to mean like the the um, watermelon heads are pretty bad at getting them because there's still a lot of people on the earth. As far as I was concerned, the more I read, the more I was pretty sure the whole melon head thing was nothing more than wild urban legend. There are no records of a Dr. Crow, or insane asylums burning down, or mansions for that matter, in the locations that the events were supposed to have taken place. So that right there is a pretty big red flag when none of the pieces of the origin story existed. But. Combine that with the fact that you have nearly identical origin stories that take place in different locations, and you've got a lot of work to do to get me to buy in. Yeah, but Daddy, you know how they said that there was a mansion burning down? Mm-hmm. What if they got rid of the mansion? Yeah, but there's no record of a mansion ever existing there. What the what? No, that's what I mean. Like, it's very confusing. Like, it, it makes it very hard to believe. Then I don't believe about those kids. Well, and that's fair, but here's a bit of a stretch that could add some plausibility to things. Bring it. Now, I did eventually come across one thing that leads me to believe that there's some nugget of truth in here somewhere. And it manages to explain a bit more about the whole Connecticut connection as well. Now, you see, some of the legends from Connecticut fall back on the melon heads coming from inbred hillbilly stereotypes. One particular group of Appalachians were known as the Melungians. These people are said to have been made up of outcasts, freed slaves, and Native Americans. This kind of lineage would have certainly given them an interesting look in terms of skin color, if nothing else. They were also known to be pretty reclusive and kept mostly to themselves. Interestingly, though, is the fact that the word Melungian would sometimes be converted into melonhead. You know how sometimes people change words from one thing into another? I know how people change names. Well, it's it's kind of like that, yeah. So they they turned Melungian and turned it into a nickname meaning Melonhead. Either that's like another country that's saying Melonhead, but or or is it like or did they say Melungium and then they said Melonhead? Yeah, Melonhead came second. Now, the article I read pointed out that this is only speculation, but I tend to agree that when people don't understand things, especially other people, they make up stories that aren't always so kind. Since the Melungians were so reclusive, they were the perfect target for stories of mental illness and cannibalism. So it's entirely possible that the whole melon head thing comes from a group of people who just wanted to be left alone, getting made fun of by other people. Uh, well, that make a good point because, like, if they want to be left alone, just leave them alone. Well, yeah, but people aren't so good at that kind of thing. Bullies. Well, it, this is this is a whole story about who are the real monsters here. The bullies. So, I kind of made this one a little bit of a twist because it wasn't truly a cryptid matter. But you can see where people don't understand things and start spreading rumors and suddenly these dark stories of monsters come out of nowhere, right? Probably to make fun of them. Now, I think that pretty well does it for us today. Um, Do you have any final thoughts? Well, um, if you ever see a person that looks like they have a disease and they have a big head, then that's probably a melon head. I would not recommend calling them that. Psych. I'm just kidding. Never, never do that. I'm sorry if the if anybody was listening to that like that. Um, I'm just kidding. Never do that. Any other thoughts? Um, try not to get diseases by mosquitoes. Also fair for this time of year. For me. It's kind of fun to think about uh, how, despite all our technology and stuff, that there could possibly be groups of people 
who we know next to nothing about that are living as they always have for almost 200 years. I mean, lost tribes exist elsewhere in the world, so it's really not out of the question that they could be here in the United States. Well, maybe. Who knows? Like, if they... Well, they probably have been dead now. If, Like, there hasn't been reporting news about any cannibalism since. Well, there wasn't really then either. More, more problems oh. in the story. So, like, it, they didn't have any newspapers? They did, but there weren't any real stories of cannibalism. It was always, you know, I know somebody who saw them and knew the guy who got eaten or that kind of thing. Those are the kind of stories when you can usually tell something's made up. When, well, they, when they heard it from a person who heard it from a person, never trust it. Never trust bullies either. And before we go, I would like to remind everyone to visit us on social media, if so inclined, or visit us at Patreon. And if you think we're deserving, we'd love if you left us a review on iTunes to help spread the word of Kid Cryptid. Yes, please do that. And as always, thank you for listening. Until next time. <laughs>